stehen aufschießen. Belüftung klar, Zündung klar, Vorstufe klar. While of questionable military value, the V-2 was undoubtedly a remarkable technical achievement. Perhaps the most fitting epitaph for this most potent of all of Germany's advanced aircraft and rockets were the words spoken by Walter Dornberger to Werner von Braun, the V-2's designer, on the day of its first successful launch. Do you realize what we have accomplished today? Today, the spaceship was born. Well, when you're on a good fraud, you better stick to it. And this shows so many things about the state of the world in the 1940s, how they were calling the shots, the one world government already in place, and they had Germany doing this big fraud, which of course added power to the fraud after World War II. The Americans just had to have this. This was something the British showed the Americans in a certain way. So the Americans would just love to have these things and spend lots of money on a fake space program. And they brewed it all with their fake little Hitler in fake little Nazi Germany. And you've just got to look at this thing. This is just insane. It's a whole little rigmarole of how they uh, get this all happening. They bring it on a train at first. Oh, this is the other one. So they bring it along here on this train and then they've got to fuel it. They've got so much uh, rigmarole to go through before they have this thing to upright it. And they say they've got to get it perfectly uh, upright, perfectly at 90 degrees. Well, I mean, if they're going to send it to England, wouldn't they sort of put it on a little bit of a tilt headed in the direction of England, say England was over this way? Why would they sit straight up and just go straight up in the air and come straight back down again? Because what is steering it? This has got no gimbal control even. They're not even going to tell you it's got anything to steer. It's just got fins. It somehow knows where to go. You see the absolute ludicrous nature of this thing. It is an absolute fraud. They bring it along here. Look at these fins. What? What? Where's the steering device in these fins? And other than that, it's just a big um, sphere. So it's going to go wherever the wind blows. This is a whole rigmarole and fueling it up. It is just absolute. It's it's quite good little tech they're using to. Uh, you know, run the fraud as far as hydraulics and everything. So there's developments in those sort of industries attached with it, no doubt. Look, big cranes here, you know, development of those things can be used for other purposes, of course. But for this day, they're showing here how it's come in on a um, rail truck and they're going to move it to the uh, petrol truck. I think they've just moved it here at this stage. After they fitted the warhead, they made a big thing about fitting the warhead. That was pretty interesting. And I'll show you that bit where there. You can see it has no uh, head, not there. Hang on a second. Yeah, it's got one of those fluffy doors on it here at the moment. And uh, they take that off and they put the cone on it. Somewhere here. It's got the uh, sharp point on it there, you see. Hang on, I'll find that for you where they actually just put it on. Funny, the one here doesn't look very big. Seems to change size quite a bit, this rocket. Look here, he is. What's the way he turns something here? I don't know what he's turning. And he pulls the floppy door off. Some screw fitting there. <laughs> here it comes. Looks like he was turning well anything, doesn't the it? Railway siding. Very the odd. Armourers take off the seal covering the nose of the V2 and prepare to fit the actual warhead. This is found in its own seal container section, which is raised up to the nose of the rocket body using a chain and tackle located on another mobile gantry and then offered up to the nose. Very strange. It doesn't have a pointy end. It's still got a square blunt end. But the next time you see it, it's... uh. I 
when it comes along here, it's pointy. Warhead now fitted the Fawn Zoot machine and pulls the V. See, where was that, where that, they fitted the pointy bit? You just have to watch the whole thing through. I'll just take the sound out. Here we go. Here he is here. Look, it's just still a square bit. Oh, I see. It's a big sheaf thing. Oh, look. look it's got a hollow point in it. It's a hollow pointed bullet. That's how it steers itself. It somehow smells the air and it smells the British and it heads towards Britain. And, you know, really, that was a bit like a circumcision ritual, wasn't it, now? Taking off the uh, foreskin. Look, like the foreskin, see? Because it's still got a little peeny hole, look, and it takes it off. Exactly. Circumcision of the rocket. What a classic. Symbolism everywhere in all these things. Now look at this thing here. <laughs> look at that. They're, they're fluttering. The relative impotence of the Luftwaffe's bomber force in the West to carry out any the wings sort of effective on. bombing campaign against the British Isles from 1942 onwards made the attraction really of a fast unmanned flying bomb irresistible to Adolf Hitler. Do you really think this could work? In the FI-103, he had at last the look at the rail. Buffer, or here it comes. With which he could... Now what is steering this? doesn't even appear to have flaps on this wing. I mean, but who would lift or, or um, you know, pull on the handle or, or that on this to make the flaps go up or down? Who's, who's going to do that? Is it automatically adjusted somehow, eh? The wonders of the technology. It's got no eyes <laughs> to see with. It's not like some modern drone or something, a little TV camera in it. This funny looking uh, grill on the front here, this is just a toy. And you see when it blasts off, it looks so fraudulent, absolutely fraudulent. Hitting the V1, which normally cruised at around 360 miles an hour, was difficult but not impossible. A direct hit was not necessary. A shrapnel could disable the missile or render its delicate control system inoperative. Its delicate control system inoperative from a bit of shrapnel. And uh, what makes the bomb explode uh, to deliver the shrapnel unless it hits something? There are a lot of questions I have there, actually. Uh, they had bombs that just went off at a certain height, did they? And then they would explode shrapnel in directions. I guess that's what they're saying there. But still, as we can see, this weapon and this whole idea, they're just shooting bombs up in the sky here that obviously must have some effect like that so they can blow up so that we can see them blowing up and not really blowing up anything because i mean how impossible it is to hit things at a distance in the air really when you really think about it especially things that have no uh control whatsoever even with efforts to counter them the buzz bomb attacks were fearsome thousands were recorded but defences improved gradually, and in all, only a quarter of the missiles ever reached that. A quarter? See, one four, fourteen, a hanging man idea, and you would be hanging, can also be 0.25, folks, 37 if you want to do it that way. But this is a hoaxcraft story, and that was the whole idea. They had to uh, create this whole idea of rocketry, then they could tax the American people in the 50s to uh, build more and more fraudulent rockets, all aiming to the fraudulent space program. And as I showed in the very beginning of the video here, that's what uh, the guy even said to Werner Bron Braun. <laughs> all these things here they're doing here, look at this. Absolute, look. Just concepts. That's all they are, but no way of steering. No way of steering whatsoever. And here we go. Here's a launch of experimental one. Up we go. Into the black straight away, is it? Oh no, but look at that for a fraudy looking uh, imagery. Well, here's a big menacing black one. And look, it suddenly, it cuts. See, that's a model. 
that wasn't the big one. They don't release anything too big because it's going to come down on top of your head. Look at that for fraudulent. See, the fraud is nothing new, and this is terrible fraud, isn't it? Look. Oh, look at this one is the one that fails. They've got to have a few failures to when the, they show you one that goes straight. You go, gee, they're working out how to do it. That's what generally would happen with these things. You see, if they made one too big, it'd be very dangerous. Look at these guys ducking for cover. Look at the guy ducking cover with the suit on. With the suit on. Like, they want to put a certain civilian thing in it. They actually said civilian people come and do the theodolites. For some reason, they need a civil surveyor. Let's just look at this guy running for cover again here. And again, just like NASA, they take ages to uh, take off. Not like the little amateur rockets or little rockets you buy from Chinatown. Oh, look out here. It must be the one here. Up she goes, and where she lands, nobody knows. Here we go. That's about all what one would ever do, really. So they've got to fraud it all up. Because if you saw that, you'd be worried. Here we go. Here's the man ducking for cover. Oh, look, there he is. Unbelievable. The civilian in amongst it, ducking for cover. And finally, I'll just show you the launch of this V1 here on the rail. Here it is all flaring up. Off she goes along the rail. And look, it disappeared for a second. Do you notice that? It seemed to disappear to me anyway. Where is it there now? Look. Oh, it was up. Let's just watch it back here to see. Yeah, it seemed to come out of nowhere there. So where is it on the screen there now? Where is it on the screen there now, folks? Look. Here it goes. Look, it disappears here. This is like 9-11, look, totally out of view, and then it's up higher. Let's just come up, let's just watch this one more time here. Oh, terrible, isn't it, look. Yeah, it just seems to come out of nowhere. Wait on, the one bit, let's follow all the way through here. Here it is there. Now it seems to, now it's somewhere just here. See where its position is? Now I can't see it at all, I don't know. And then it, look, it's up this high. You're sort of looking for it here at the angle it was going. It seems to have jumped up, doesn't it? Let's just look at that one more time. Now I can't see it really anywhere here. Let's just go back one more time, a bit further back. We see it off there. Certainly seems to have disappeared here now. And look, it, it definitely, it, it seemed to go up in the air as much as it was going in that trajectory that way. So, gee, look at that. Oh, and then conveniently we'll cut to here. Oh, look, it's coming through the air there. <laughs> look. Oh, I tell you what, hop along Cassidy. <laughs> John Wayne, the whole bit. Hollywood, eat your heart out. Look at this. Oh, look at, look at the uh, fluttering going on. And look at this. Just like the plane of 911. Look, it's starting to fade off on that wing there. No, oh, there's one on the ground now. That's the best you get. Well, there you go, folks. I think I've about proved it. And you see what they've done here. They've created this menacing idea. And then, of course, everybody in the West had to learn to duck and cover themselves as they had to develop these things, and then they had the Soviets developing them too. So off this one lie in the beginning, they were able to split the lie, US versus Russia, and the lies continue to today.